Hello everybody, welcome back to the wood shop where it is windy, windy, windy outside. The temperatures are actually pretty nice, but it's windy, so you might hear wind in the background of this recording. So today we are going to work on our gun mount. Gun sitting right, right, good lord, over there. <laughs> it's hard to do that in, in, in verse on the screen. So last time when we talked about doing this, we talked about using some 2x4 that I had planed down and doing something with that. And I was going to do that. I have plenty of 2x4. Plenty of 2x4. But then I was digging around. I have more places where I store scrap wood in this shop than you can even imagine. Like, I, I can't even imagine where, like, this. I have no idea where this came from. It was ripped off of something. I don't know what it was ripped off of. <laughs> um, I have tons of it. Tons of it. Um, I don't know if that got in there. There. Look at all of it. All of that. And that's not even all of it. There's more of it up in my storage. Um, I don't know where it came from, but uh, I have a lot of it, and I started thinking about it. I'm like, I could take some 2x4 and plane it all down, which th that's fine. I can do that. Um, this 2x4 that I've got already planed down is actually already warped, just natural for pine this long um, to warp and uh, it's warped that's fine and I looked at my other two by fours and I'm like well they're all warped they're all kind of crap <laughs> to be honest they're all they're all um, reject lumber I have one two by four that's not reject lumber um, and it's a six footer that I don't know what I was going to do with it and it's a different color it's a um, it's a darker color so then I started thinking well I've got this this ripped board that I ripped for some reason and I still don't know what the reason was. And obviously I wasn't going to use it for something because it's sitting up in my storage for so long. I don't know what it's for. I noticed that there's like um, nail holes and stuff in some of it. So obviously I did something with it and then I ripped this stuff and I, I don't know. It looks pine-ish. It's a dark pine. So I think we're going to use this make our life a little bit easier, make this project go a little bit faster. Um, does mean I'm going to have to make some adjustments to the project, but let's get started building a mount for our French mass from 1936. Okay, so I've been building other things in the meantime, things that, that were like 30 minute projects. I was like, DOS is short, so she needs a stool that's like four inches high for something, and I made it in 30 minutes, router, just for that. Um, but those are the kind of things I've been doing. I didn't think he really cared. I could have videoed them. It would have taken me longer to video them than actually do them. Anyway, so we have a bunch of stuff here. Push sticks and things. Okay, so remember, we're going to use this board, this, this pine end joint board, factory end joint board, um, this is what we're going to use to mount the mast to. We're going to cut it down to the correct height for the mast, which is written down on my piece of paper, um, which is 9 inches. Then, we've got to join it all together. Okay, so originally the 2x4s were going to do this, because obviously 2x4s would provide the structural rigidity that we want, but we're not going to have the 2x4s anymore. So. I'm like, well, what I'm going to do, I'm not, I could biscuit join them, and I think I still might biscuit join them, but I also want to actually have a, a hanging device. So, I thought about how am I going to hang this, and this is where my 2x4 comes into play, not this one. This one, because it's already been uh, planed, I'm not going to mess with it, I'm actually going to use it for something else. I don't know what, but I will. But, Because I always have extra 2x4s. <laughs> I got this 2x4. A little bit dirty. Or it is we're going to make a mount using this 2x4. And how do you do that? Well, you're go I'm going to cut this 2x4 at a 45. 45. And then you hook uh, one part, the top part, the part that has the, the longer portion, out from the back of this, and you put the other part, mount the other part to the wall, and it creates a join on the wall so that it sits there on the wall and holds it. 
It can hold a huge amount of weight because you're going to put this 2x4, the bottom part of the 2x4, into your joists. And so you actually, it's overkill in one respect. But at the same time, it allows me to fasten all of these end join boards onto the 2x4 to create stability there too. So that is what we're going to do. Alright, so the biscuit joiner. I don't know how many of you have ever used one of these guys. Beautiful tool. Had to find it. I don't use it a lot. It's a beautiful tool for anybody who's not used one. It's a rotating blade that is just going to cut a slot. And in that slot, we insert Some biscuits. These are some joining biscuits. These are size zero joining biscuits. With a little bit of glue and uh, it makes a really nice, I'm trying to see if I've got one somewhere, a really nice tight, I don't have any of my test pieces, I probably broke them down, a uh, really nice tight joint. And the next, to remind me that this is the back, so that it goes together like that. To make sure I get the biscuits to line up, I'm lining up this part of my biscuit joiner with the edge of the wood. So, in theory, because all the wood was cut to 9 inches, it should line up, in theory. At worst, I might have to hit it with a little bit of sandpaper. Alright, we're going to dry fit these. Biscuits in, like so just dry fit, make sure it all will all line up. That's gonna line up nicely. Alright. So what we're gonna do, because I need to get all the way the entire length of this board and I don't have clamps that big, <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put glue on these, clamp them, make sure they're lined up properly, okay? So they're clamped. Then I'm going to clamp this down onto the board, onto my workbench, so that they're not going to move anywhere. And then I can work with this one that's over off your screen here, and I'll just push it and clamp it down onto the board until it dries. Shouldn't take too long. I'm using my Gorilla Wood Glue, so it's, I don't know, there we go, 20 to 30 minutes. So we'll do that. While that's drying then, we'll figure out these other boards um, that are going to go around the outside as well as how we're going to actually mount the rifle on here. That's the plan. Alright, so brushes. When we're doing this kind of thing, where we're gluing stuff like this, helpful to have a little brush because then I can get the glue down in there easier without having it flow everywhere. Also, I'll bet you bottom dollar that
There we go. All right, we're at 38 and 3 eighths. That's my mark right there. Right there. So we're going to cut this good. Now I could, of course, go and dig out, you know, get my chop saw or something, but that's not a back saw, so we're going to use that today. Because this is such a thin piece of wood, there's really no reason that I need the power saw. Other than it's fast. But not that much faster. And you consider all the setup I would have had to do to get that cut. I'd still actually be setting up the, the saw, actually. Thing is, the scrap that I just cut off actually is going to probably serve good as my uh, cross pieces. And through the magic of editing, there you go, two nine three quarter inch pieces. So I've got those. I've got the, the long pieces. So we have all the pieces meeting for the outside. We're going to wait for this to, the glue to dry on our, our flat board before we even try to attach that, because we'll use we'll just use the um, air compressor and we'll use some finishing nails that will be easy to do. So our next two steps are how do we mount the rifle and the the actual hanger that we're going to cut. So let's start with how do we mount the rifle. So how are we going to secure it? Well, test piece. <laughs> and that probably will be the, the, the template for everything, but that was cut by hand on my bandsaw. Fits there nicely. A little bit of sanding, a little bit of cleanup. Well, it's going to work really nice. So I'm going to cut another one, slightly bigger on the on the the jaw to fit down here, and I've got it. It's not going to be able to rotate. Um, that cleans up. I think that'll clean up nice. And there you go. So now we just have to cut the next piece. Perfection, it is not. <laughs> In fact, I need to sand this out a little bit, but that's fine. I've got tools to do that. There. I think that's going to work. Um, I'll sand this down a little bit, clean it up. We're going to roll the edges and everything. But I think that's going to work. Move it up a little bit. Right there is actually. Yeah, I gotta, gotta cut that in just a little bit, smooth that. Yeah, we can do it. Look at that. A little bit of, little bit of 
ingenuity there. All right, let me show you how good this is. Or not. All right, so it sits right in there, nice and secure. It's flush against the board, and it sits right in there. Just like that. So this rifle isn't going to tilt at all. But I could still pull it out if I really wanted to. Yeah, just a little bit of ingenuity, a little bit of on the flyism. I'm going to clean these up a little bit more. I'm going to sand around the edges to clean them. Um, and then we just have to cut the, the mounting bracket. Let's be clear. What I'm about to do isn't exactly as benign as it might seem. I'm about to cut a 2x4 at an angle an extended point on my table saw. Here's the important thing for anybody. Don't stand behind the 2x4. Because if it catches and it kicks, it's going backwards really, really fast. So I'm not going to be standing behind the sucker. Got a push stick. I'm going to make use of it. I don't do this lightly. Reality is probably could find a better way to do this. I've decided to go away from 45 into a 35 degree angle, 37 and a half, whatever, just because it's a little bit less of a cut. But, see here, we're going to push, we're going to push with the push stick. Hopefully we don't cause any problems. really good place. Um, we've uh, unplugged things so I don't accidentally turn them on. Uh, we're in a good place. There's a few things we have left to do. Um, I've got to uh, stain this, which means I need to do this in the, do that in my basement because it's just too dusty out here for me to stain it without getting dust all in my stain. And I'll actually do each piece individually. Like I'll do the back piece, I'll do these, um, I'll do the pieces go around the outside and then of course I've got to mount our new our new hanger okay we have all of the pieces of our puzzle almost all of our pieces of the puzzle There's a couple of going over there okay so made a couple changes one you'll see that I have a few extra uh, border pieces because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set this whole board out by the width of the 2x4 which I'm going to use to hang it because it'll look nice then because I'm using leftovers. Remember, this is a complete scrap wood project. I did not buy anything for this. <clears throat> this is all I got in terms of screws. So I'm going to use these drywall screws. The problem with them, for me, um, at least for assembly, the problem with them is they're black. And that's not going to look great. So what I did, there is what you fire with this gun. It's a 7.5 millimeter, 30 cal French. So slightly different than normal. But these are all just casings, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to glue the casing over the, the place where I put the screws in so you don't see it because it'll just be some casings for, that were used for this rifle. And there's actually no physical usable shells in there. It's all casings. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Uh, so look, this, this is what I meant. Um, let's see if you can read that. So, specifically for the 7.5 millimeter mass. <laughs> Very specific. Anyway. All right, so what are we going to do to get this to sit up? Oh, one other thing. My poly, I've thrown it away. <clears throat> These are not polyed. I did not put polyurethane on this. Um, I went and opened up my poly, and it was a solid block of poly. Um, somehow the, the can got a puncture in it, so it dried out. Again, 
I'm not going to go buy anything new. That's the whole point of this project. When the pandemic slows down or when I get around to it, I'm probably gonna, I'm going to buy some poly and then I will take this off the wall and polyurethane it. But for now, it'll be fine as it is. <clears throat> so what are we going to do? Well, we got to start assembly. So we're going to start by putting the 2x4 backing that we are going to use on and then we will fire up the compressor. Let me use my little Craftsman compressor, not my giant. And we'll nail these guys on. Screw these in. And we will have our finished, fi finished, finished product. We, I had some leftover angles from another project that I've stuck in here. Now, the only thing we have is this little area on either side. And I have, because I always have spare blocks, two by four blocks. Oops, all right, fine, bye. Uh, that's going to be a little bit there. All right, so now the idea is I'm going to put in the screws. I've got to, I got to think this through how we're going to do this. So these screws are going to go in. They're going to go a good bit in there. They're going to go far enough in there. I'm not too worried about it. And then I've got to be smart about it. So I'm going to put probably two here so we can put a shell there. Two here at an angle we can put a shell in. A shell, a shell, and then up top I might not put the shells in. I might just stick with four shells for now. But I do need to find my drill. All right, let's put our first one on. Well, this is the advantage of having uh, multiple, multiple drill types. <laughs> Watch this guy back. Now this is an old Craftsman, 15.6 volt, so it does not have nearly the power of that newer Ryobi, but we're not, we're not wanting a lot of power. Go. And I just want to get it flush. That's it. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. I mean, you might think it looks terrible, but I don't think it looks too bad. Now, I have no problem saying that some people would have drawn a straight line to make sure that their screws were exact. I'm not that exact. For a couple reasons. One, scrap. Two, I'm not really that worried about it. Once this is hung up in the air, high enough in the air, you're probably not going to be able to even see the screws. And finally, if it annoys me enough, I will eventually rebuild this into something better. Um, but right now, that would involve me having what I don't have, um, as well as. As well as um, things I don't have, like pian piano uh, hinges. I would need a piano hinge to do what I really would love to do with this thing, which is make an opening case. I don't have those things, so we're going to make do. We got that done. All right, so we've got number eight, one and a half inch, which should be enough. They'll just, if I if I come too far down, they'll just poke through the back. But do I care? No, because the back is going to be hidden from people's view. So that being said, I've been I've been playing with this. So I've been on been like half hour. Just trying to figure out where exactly I want to put this. If I put it here, I'd want to tilt it like that. See? But then I'm like, no, I kind of like it up there. If I put it there, it doesn't quite fully go flush. I'd have to, sh to sand a little bit more in there, and I'm not going to do that because I've taken the time to 
put the varnish on there. So I think we're going to go with that. I'm going to go with this and, and hope we don't, you know, cause any problems. Actually, it's going to be really good right there. I know it sticks out a little bit. I was kind of thinking maybe I would do this to kind of hide it. I still might, but there might be a little bit too much brass on here. Uh, <clears throat> I could have sunk it a little bit, countersunk it, but I'm afraid I'm going to split this because this is really not great pine. Um, it's not like if it was a piece of oak, I'd feel more confident doing this, um, but it's not. It's cheapo pine. So we're not we're not gonna we're not gonna risk it. We're gonna put this in at an angle though. And I'm keeping the rifle on here because I know it's gonna get tight on the rifle and I don't want it to um I don't want the rifle to um, be impossible to get in later. There, actually, we're actually good. That is actually going to be perfect. There. We got that in. Rifle is good. Put this right about here. And I'm not worried if these aren't exactly perpendicular. Um, are parallel to each other or perpendicular to the base because you got to remember the rifle is physically a, here an object um, I can't I can't really be that worried about you know these are gonna have to conform to the rifle is what I'm trying to say The rifle sits right in there. Nice. Okay, so the brass cartridges. I think we're going to glue them like this. Just over these, these screws. Should be simple enough. I'm not going to do that yet. we got to put the, the facing on. So I need to fire up the compressor, get some air in it, and go get my nails. One in. Can rotate it ever so slightly. There we go. So I use a um, pretty crappy border cable. This is the constant result. See that right there? Yeah, that's a, that's a misfire that's now stuck. And the only way to get it out is going to be to take this sucker apart. This happened with all my border cables, by the way. 
um, I actually replaced my Porter Cable stapler with a Hazard Fraud one. That's how bad that was. So, um, yeah, that's going to be fun. Hammer those in, but that's all right. Almost wonder. <laughs> Look, we can make an F for France. That doesn't look like an F. <laughs> I could also just line them up down here. Yeah. You know what? Let's do it without the cartridges for now. And again, I do have to poly this, so maybe when I poly it, I'll make a decision about the cartridges. I actually mine the black on there now. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right. So that's what it's looking like now. I'm going to go. I have to you know what I wanted to check. Can I actually? Ah, I can't. Okay. I'm going to make sure I can actually get the rifle out. I like how I checked that after I had finished doing that. But there. There's our case. Now I'm going to clean the rifle because it's gotten kind of gross. I'm going to clean this. I'm going to go mount it. And I'm going to look at it on the wall. All right. And there she sits. I'm, from here now, I'm thinking I like the black screws a lot more than I thought I would. Um, I think I will put the some of the shells maybe underneath where the barrel is or something like that. And I also think I might get a wood burner and burn in like more about it, like it's you know a French mass, it's model number, it's make year, that kind of stuff. But there we go, we got our French mass, all scrap wood. Hope you enjoyed this video. Next time, who knows what we'll find. We'll find something to make. Till then, I appreciate every one of you watching. Take care.